So welcome back guys. Now we will going to discuss the concept of semaphores in this course. So let us start our discussion on semaphore with the help of our simple analogy. So let us take an example to start our discussion that you are throwing a birthday party and only 10 guests can accommodate in a party hall, right? But you were a bad organizer or you can say you were a bad planner and instead of 10 guests you invited 13 guests. You did not care about the maximum capacity of your party hall, right? So what will happen? You have a party hall with a maximum capacity of 10 guests but on your birthday party 13 guests arrived because you invited 13, right? Now we have a strict restriction that if the capacity of the party hall is 10 that at any point of time not more than 10 guests can be accommodated into this party hall. We have to follow this rule, right? So now it is quite obvious that out of 13 guests, 3 guests have to wait outside, which is kind of a very disrespectful thing to do. The first 10 visitor or the first 10 guest has entered into the party hall and they are enjoying the party, whereas the late comers, that is the 3 guests who came late, have to wait outside the party hall, right? Now this is quite a very obvious example and you may come across such a situation in a day-to-day -day life. So here the permit number is 10. That is the maximum number of guests that are allowed to enter into this party hall is called the permit number of this party hall. And when one guest leaves, then one guest from the waiting list can enter into the hall, right? So here we have 10 guests and let us suppose that one guest leaves, he is done with the party, right? So total number of guests in the party hall is now 9, but the maximum capacity that can be accommodated in, in the party hall is 10. So from the waiting list, one guest can enter into the party hall and the number of guests who are waiting at the gate will be 2, right? And therefore, the total number of guests in the party hall will become 10 again, right? So you can see that as soon as a guest leaves, a guest from the waiting list can enter into the party hall, right? If there is a capacity in the party hall, a guest from the waiting list is allowed to enter into the party hall so that your party hall is full to its capacity, right? So this is where semaphores comes into the picture. Here guest corresponds to execution units. Execution units means threats right and here the party hall corresponds to critical section or a shared resource of your program right so semaphores have one objective it places an upper bound on a number of users of a resource right until now we have been studying that inside a critical section only one thread is allowed to enter and execute inside the critical section at any point of time but semaphore allows multiple threads t1 t2 T3 to simultaneously execute in the critical section in a concurrent manner, but semaphores places an upper bound on number of threads or users that can execute in the critical section. In this case, the upper bound is 10, right? So this is where semaphores comes into the picture. When you have a resource in your program, which can be accessed or executed by n number of execution units called threads, then you must consider using semaphores, right? 